When I was little, we had yaks, sheep, and horses, lots of them. They were on the hills, and the hills were full of flowers. Horses, you know horses? I loved riding horses. As I remember, all the older people would be chanting prayers all the time and the children would be happily playing around. I don't remember any troubles. We practiced our religion, we had our rights, and we lived happily. My youth was the happiest time of my life. I guess young people all over the world behave as we did. We danced, sang, fell in love, grew jealous, showed off and did innumerable other silly and inconsequential things. We expressed feelings of the heart through song. Our struggle is not for a piece of land. It is for a way of life. It is for a culture, it is for a civilization which teaches us that life in the form of a human being is the most precious. When the Chinese first came to Tibet, they were very nice. They were pretending to be good. When the Tibetans went to get water, they helped us to carry that heavy water. When we were working on the farm, they helped us when we were totally exhausted. They repaired our shoes. We all thought the Chinese were lovers of religion. They said they were just guests and would be leaving soon. They just wanted to help us. And if they saw us happy, then they would be happy. Like that, they lied to us. I was grabbed by three Chinese. As soon as we were put in the truck, we were beaten. They used the butts of the rifles and tied our hands behind us. We were not only beaten, we were made to take off all of our clothes and lay face down on the cement floor. They said, you are dirty, so they put on gloves and face masks. And then they told us we were prostitutes who chased after monks. I didn't know if it was day or night, I was confused. They beat us until we were like corpses. When they stuck the electric cattle prod in my vagina, something happened in my heart, and then I fell unconscious. During this quarter century, immense suffering occurred to the Tibetan people. In 1960, the International Commission of Jurists, an independent human rights organization, concluded that China was guilty of committing genocide in Tibet. The Commission's report found evidence that murder, arbitrary imprisonment, and torture were inflicted on the Tibetans on a large scale, and that children were indoctrinated to turn against their parents and reject their religion and customs. In 1996, Beijing launched the Strike Hard campaign, a nationwide anti-crime effort. In Tibet, the Strike Hard campaign is aimed at separatists. Monks and nuns who express loyalty to the Dalai Lama are deemed enemies of the state. We don't want the Chinese in Tibet. We want our independence. We want our country back. The Chinese forbid us from saying that. For Tibetans in Tibet, calling for independence is the number one crime. The basic cry of humanity for freedom is today the number one crime for which people have been uh, given summary executions. And all political prisoners in Tibet are labeled criminals. And that enables them to treat them in the highest possible manner. Here's something very, very important. Freedom is our basic right from our birth. I think it is our moral responsibility to help those people who are still under authoritarian regime. In the spring of 1989, students massed by the tens of thousands in Beijing's Tiananmen Square to demand democratic freedoms. I think Tiananmen was much more a threat to China than the leaders wanted to let on. 
and I think a decision was made to crush it. International outrage over Tiananmen Square was soon lost in the rush of businesses scrambling to gain access to China's vast emerging market. Pressure on Beijing to improve its human rights record was replaced by a policy of constructive engagement with China. We welcome and support China's accession to the World Trade Organization. And in the long run, advance of Chinese prosperity depends on China's full integration into the rules and norms of international institutions. We have seen a natural entrepreneurial instinct of Chinese people come to bear in developing what Many Chinese consumer products filling American shelves are produced by factories owned and operated by the People's Liberation Army. I think big business uh, is cornering the market in many ways on U.S.-China policy. People who have been fighting for human rights and democracy in China and Tibet are now uh, up against a much bigger force than they ever were before. In the years to come, the China lobby in this country will be so significantly tied into the Chinese government with billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of contracts that those few voices calling for democracy and human rights in that part of the world will have a hell of a time. Why doesn't the United Nations want to listen to the Dalai Lama, the embodiment of peace and nonviolence? They want to listen to Yasser Arafat. All leaders in the world are talking about peace, but nobody's doing anything about it. Everyone is condemning violence, but nobody is doing anything to support non-violence. But people ask me, what does it mean for Tibet? That's not the question. What does it mean to your country, to your values, to your principles, the land of the free and home of the brave? Stooping down to this murderous dictatorship which has lost the confidence of its own people. To your American ancestors, like is it Lincoln or Jefferson, I think they stood firmly on moral principle. I am not admire your weapon. I really admire the, your principle, democracy, freedom, and liberty. Now, your policy, I think, must guide it with these things. So, uh, let American people's hearts speak. did not found a religion. Buddha founded an educational movement. Buddha, Buddha's discovery, his enlightenment was, that human beings, if they make an effort to understand themselves, they can get rid of their negative tendencies and they can develop to an unlimited degree their positive tendencies. When they do that, they can genuinely become happy. So the Buddha's real teaching, his real announcement was that freedom is possible. I have attained it, you can attain it.